Good morning, folks. Good morning, superstars. Happy Sunday. This is Wesley Billion Dollar Virgin here with another Sunday mindset message here. And today is Father's Day, and I want to wish all the fathers that are listening to this rant right now a happy Father's Day. Okay? Happy Father's Day. I'm I'm sure that you're enjoying your day with your children, with your family, going to church, eating dinner, having a good time here. But I wanted to, just for a second, just to not only wish you Happy Father's Day, um, to talk with you, talk with you for a second here. And this is for men and men only. And women, feel free to stay, or you can always tag. A few men below or you want to share this video out you could do that as well and uh, you know the title of tonight's or this morning's topic is just be uh, how to become the best version of yourself and this is for men okay and I truly believe that all of you men out there you want to become the best version of yourself, even though you have made mistakes, even though you may be struggling financially, you have, may have bad credit, you may, you probably have made or been through so much adversity in your life. You could be in your 30s and 40s and 50s and feel that's too late. But listen up here, man, it's not too late. And I want to share some thoughts with you and what I feel, you know, what it takes to be the best version of yourself. And I'm not saying that I am, but I am always working in that direction to always be the best, not just version of myself, the best man, the best father, uh, the best friend, you know, just kind of uh, an aggregate of every role that I play in my life. I make a conscious effort to be the man that I am here today here. So if you give me five minutes, I'm going to share some words with you. Then you can go back to eating your food and your barbecue and drinking and whatever you do on a Sunday, Father's Day, you know, to, that, that you utilize to be celebrated here today. You deserve it. And as a matter of fact, women, let's go ahead and wish all the men happy Father's Day in the comments below if you don't mind. Just tell them happy Father's Day, even if... Your father haven't hasn't done the best job or wasn't the best father in your life. Tell them happy Father's Day, right? And make them feel good. You know, I've learned this a long time ago, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you this quote. And this is for all women to really think about. If you see a man as he is, if you see a man as he is, he gets worse. But if you see a man of what he could be, he will become what he should be. Which means, in layman's terms, just see your dad better. You know, see your father better. Even if you don't have the best father in contrast to another father, see that man better than what he is. <laughs> And there's no guarantee he's going to change, but he will have an opportunity to change, to be a better father, a better dad, or just a better person on the planet here. So write down these points here, okay? <laughs> write down these key points on, uh, you know, what I believe, what it takes to be the best version of yourself. I think I talked about this last night uh, briefly, but I want to just go a little bit in detail. Just, you know, what I believe and not when I say the best version of yourself. You know, we're talking about to be rich and financially astute, build a legacy. Comment below. I think all men would like to build an empire for their family, correct? I think all men on here would like to retire their mother or be able to bless her and bless your father and bless people in your life that deserve it. And a lot of people are counting on you, your family, your wife, your children here. So. I want to give you some thoughts here, and you may say, well, Wesley, why should I listen to you? Well, just to give you my background, I, I'm i a self-made millionaire, but I grew up pretty average, pretty poor. However, over the years, I have created wealth 
for myself and for my family through discipline, through self-education, through raising the bar, you know, and you know, I'm just so happy I have three lovely children and we get the opportunity to fly around the world. We get the opportunity to spend time with each other. We get the opportunity to create life or create our life how we want it to be instead of settling on how life is. <sighs> so uh, life is good. Life is perfect on my end. And I want to share some of that perfection with you. So number one, man, write this down to become the best version of it. To become the best version of yourself. Write this down. The first step is to know that you can. Okay? Honestly, think about it for a second. You have to know that you can become the best version of yourself. So many of you men, you keep whining and complaining about your current situation as if you can't do it. Oh, man, I can't do this. This is just too much, too hard. My situation is not the best. I've been in jail. I've been in prison. I got bad credit. I didn't have a daddy. I didn't have a father. Listen, you have to believe that you can do it, that you can become this extravagant, outstanding, phenomenal man. Can you come with the word amen if that makes sense to you? Listen, I mean, you have to just believe that you can. That's the first step to transforming and changing as an individual, just believing that it is possible regardless of current circumstances here, okay? Does that make sense? Can I get an amen, please? Thank you. Um, so, yeah, you got to believe that you can. One. Two, you have to be willing, keyword willing, comment that word below, okay? Willing to do what's necessary to become this new person, Yeah. Which means this, you can't say, well, I don't want to do this. This is too much. I don't want to do this. I don't know how to do it. No, you got to be willing to do whatever it takes. Whatever it takes means that you're willing to do the things that are uncomfortable. You're willing to do the things that are unpopular. You're just willing to do those things to become the man you're supposed to be. I can give you many examples. You know, you have to be willing to go to the gym, exercise which is something very trivial and something simple. You got to be willing to not argue with your woman or not argue with anyone. You gotta learn how to <laughs> think before you talk. Learn how to not react and be proactive in every situation here, okay? You have to have a willingness to do. You have to have a willingness to learn information. Because if any any man that's listening to me right now, if you're not in the position or your life is not where it should be, all that means is you don't either know something or you're failing to actually do something. Does that make sense? You either just don't know something, right? Something that you don't know. Or maybe you know, but you're just not willing to do it. So being willing to do things or do the things that are that are a bit trivial, unpopular, it's necessary. Okay, write this down. The next concept is also you must have a model. Okay, what do I mean by model? You know, many men, even the men that follow me around the world, they we're not blessed or fortunate enough to have a male role model. Maybe a father or a dad. Maybe you did have a father or a dad, but your dad is very passive. Or if you had a father and dad, he drunk too much. He smoked too much. He treated your mom piss poorly. Maybe you didn't have the best example. Maybe you still think or feel you have some trauma. Listen, whatever trauma that took place in the past with your father or the lack of, and I'm going to say this with a kind heart. Get the fuck over it. Okay, honestly, you really have to just get over it, okay? Um, 
There's no better way to put this because we can talk all day about what your father didn't do and what do you wish he did and he did this, he didn't do that, he didn't do Like You can talk for hours and for days to a counselor, to a psychologist, to your pastor, to your preacher about how terrible your father was or how he didn't do this. Well, he did this, but I wish he would have did this. Listen, get the fuck over that, okay? You are a grown man at this point here. And for you to experience any type of sadness and pain and trauma because of what your father didn't do, uh, the lack thereof, it doesn't serve you and it doesn't serve your father. You have to understand that, you know, and, you know, I see, I've experienced men that tend to use their trauma of their childhood to define or validate what's happening in their life right now. You know what, if I didn't, if I had this and I grew up in the ghetto. I grew up in the hood. Well, this is the reason why I speak this way. This is the reason why I act this way. So uh, what are you going to do now? Write this down, man. Your previous circumstances and your previous experiences doesn't have to define who you are right now. Let me say that one more time. Okay, listen, your previous circumstances and your previous situations and your past doesn't have to define who you are as a man right now. So when I say get the fuck over it, you have to think to yourself, does this serve me? Okay. Okay. Ask yourself that question. Does this serve me? Thinking about my father piss poor. I can even tell you about my own my relationship with my father. You know, growing up, I'm not gonna be I'm gonna be very honest with you. It wasn't the best childhood, in my opinion. But my dad didn't smoke, he didn't curse, he didn't do it, but it was just other things that I didn't like. He, my, my dad was a very authoritative man, he was a very strict man and uh, you know, I didn't necessarily feel love growing up and that's okay. You know, I don't want you to feel sorry, but oh my God, listen, I'm just letting you know what took place. However, I have to be happy and proud and thankful that my father was hard. Why? Because it allowed me to be resilient as a grown man. See, I think a lot of you men and even women, you want to, you want to believe you have these picture-perfect childhoods. But whatever took place in that childhood, listen, whatever happened, it's up to you to use what happened to define the best version of yourself. You know, I took all that pain of childhood and all those, those, this, all those situations and experience, experiences that I didn't like, that I hated, because growing up, you know, I wanted to get out of my house. I don't know about you, man. I wanted to get out of there. I hated it. I'm going to be honest with you. I just couldn't stand it. And it was because of my father, not because of my mother. My mother's a sweetheart. But my dad was like a drill sergeant. It just like, I just hated it. But my dad had his own issues. He had his own problems, you know, because he was raised by a dad as well that wasn't there. So you have to think about it. You have to understand where your father came from so you can understand why he did what he did but at no point do i blame my father no at no point do i say oh my father was a terrible dad no he was the greatest version of himself based off the resources that he had available to him at that time and guess what i i became a millionaire i became a better version of my father which is what he wants so you have to think that way when you think about your dad, if he wasn't the best. Become a better version of what he didn't become a better version of him. If your dad wasn't there, would you be there for your children? If your dad didn't tell you I love you, would tell your children you love them. If your dad didn't have confidence, show and start to portray confidence. If your dad didn't manage his finances properly, you manage yours properly. If your dad was a drunk, used alcohol, used drugs, you don't do that. Become the version of the man that you wanted your father to be. Can I get an amen, please? 
Okay? Honestly, that's what I did. I'm not going to throw darts and rocks at my father and say, why didn't you do this? And you did this and you made me feel this way when I was. Let me tell you why. Because it doesn't serve me. I've seen children do this as adults, blame their parents of what they should have done and what they could have done. But what you have to understand is even after you vent and you explode all your emotions, how did that serve you or that man? How? How? How does that make things better? It doesn't. And as a matter of fact, you may create a hurtful situation for the father. Like my father's older now. He's 70 plus years old. Doesn't make any sense for me to tell him everything that he did wrong when, when we were growing up. Who cares? It's over. It's done. Okay? It's not going to make sense. It's not going to serve myself. It's not going to serve him. That's how I want you to look at your situation, men, because I know it's a lot of men out here that are trying to be men, but they don't have a role model of what a man should be as it relates to your children, as it relates to your wife, your girlfriend, women, your career choice, your money, your finances. You don't have the best role model. Some of you have fathers that drink too much. They smoke. Some of you, they don't have a job. They can't keep a job. They're lazy. They can't communicate well. Some of you have fathers. That's all they do is chase women. Some of your fathers are, are just bums. Or some of your fathers are just passive. Maybe they're good men, but they're very passive. They don't have any balls, no confidence. They can't stand up for themselves. And you find yourself in that same position that you can't stand up for yourself. You lack confidence. You lack ambition. You have low self-esteem. What I want you to understand is, listen, all those things can be changed. Okay? Men... All those can be changed. You can begin to inherit the traits and habits of a confident man, of a well-groomed man, of a disciplined man, of a motivated man, a man of ambition. <laughs> okay? So you need a model. You got to find somebody. You can find them on the internet. You can find them in person. But that's to be someone that you admire, that you want to have similar habits or traits. And if you can't find someone, become the person. Like if you can't find a great version of a man on this planet, man, become it. I mean, that's what I did. I became everything that I wanted my father to be. And more. That's what I want for my son. I want my son to become a better version of myself. I want him to do all the things that I didn't do. All he feels that I should have done. Period. Why? And it makes me happy. It makes me happy if my son exceeds what I have done. My father is happy because he has two sons. My brother Chris. <laughs> And we both are millionaires. We both have families. We both have children. We, we, we both have homes. We, we both, you know, take care of our parents. I mean, they, they, they did a great job. They did a, an outstanding job. They did a phenomenal job. Are you with me, man? Okay, so write this down. Next. You become the, the best version of yourself. You got to have ambition. Oh, man, man. Let me talk to you for a second. You have to realize that ambition is the name of the game. There's nothing worse than a man that doesn't have any ambition. Like, so you can have the emotional connection with a woman. You can be nice to a woman. You can be kind to her, open her door, be chivalrous. But if you lack ambition, that woman's not going to want you for long. Because I've seen it happen. <laughs> I've seen men complain to me and say, man, I did everything. And, you know, I was like this and I'm nice and I'm kind. And I did everything before I rubbed their feet. I opened their car doors. I was nice to her. 
But you lack a mission. You don't have a job. Or you said you were going to get a job, but you still didn't get it. You don't have a career choice. You don't have a vision. You don't have a dream. You keep talking about what you're going to do. I, and I see this very prevalent in men. Men always talk about what they're going to do. Either to their woman or to other people. They say, babe, I'm going to do this. 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 And I'm going to do this. And we're going to do this. And now you're playing the video games. And she she's watching you through her peripheral vision. Are you hanging out with your boys? The same man that say he's going to. Do this, I'm going to get my place here, I'm going to get my money right, I'm going to get a new job, I'm going to get my credit right. I'm telling we're going to travel around the world, I'm going to treat you like a queen, blah, 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 blah. But everything that you do, your actions doesn't align with what you're telling that woman or other people. Listen, you got to get yourself some ambition, some drive. And women, correct me if I'm wrong. It's nothing sexier than a man with drive. With ambition, like a man that's working towards something. A man that has a purpose. A man that every day you see that man go out and do what he do best. Build his skill, work, cultivate himself, making himself better. Like you see it, the work ethic over and over and over again. That that I mean that is one and men women correct me if I'm wrong. That is one of the sexiest traits on a man. A man that's confidently striving towards something greater for himself and for her. Okay. Not sitting back being lazy, not complaining about the job, not complaining about her, complaining about life, talking about the government, complaining about everything. Sitting on the couch, smoking a blunt, drinking Crown and Coke, relaxing, watching some bullshit TV. And you're talking about how you're going to change your life and change her life. No, sir. Another. item I want to share with you is you got to get serious, man. Like, you got to get serious. You know, I get it. Some of you men are jokers. You like to play around. You're very comical, and that's okay. But you have to understand there's a point in your life that you have to get fucking serious about your life, about your legacy, about your family, about your career, about your body, your health, about your communication skills, about your emotional intelligence, and about who you want to be while you live on this planet. Got to get serious about it. Got to get serious about who you want to be and what it's going to take to become that. What I mean about when, I, when, I, when I'm talking about getting serious because you might not understand that. You got to start separating from people. Eliminating people out of your life. Some of you men, you spend so many years. Yeah, yeah, I know I got to get rid of this person. But that's my boy. That's my friend. Well, that's my best friend. Well, that's my girl. I love her. I know it's toxic. I know I know. I said let her go. But man, I can't West. Like you have to stop. Like it, when, it, when does it get to the point that you actually make a decision to, to 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 remove yourself from the toxicity. When you make a decision to remove yourself from all those things that have put you in the position where you don't even want to be. A lot of you men right now, you don't want to be where you are right now. Look at the money that is not in your bank account. Look at the car that you drive. Look where you live. Some of you men, you live with people. You live with your parents. You live with your boys. Some of you men are living with your woman because your woman has the good credit, so you're living with her. How can you call that a man? I mean, just think for a second. Some of you men are 40 years old with bad credit. 40 years old, don't have $10,000 in the bank account. 
40 years old, still drinking, smoking, like it's normal. As a matter of fact, let me be, let me put this out there. You know, any man that drinks and smokes and I, I, I mean, if you understand what drinking and smoking does to the body, I just, I believe that you are a degenerate. You are a person that want to kill yourself. Like you want to die slowly. To me, you're not an educated person. You are just a, I don't, it doesn't even matter if you have money. If you're drinking and smoking, I, I, I just, I can't wait to see you in 10 and 15. No, I can't wait for you to see yourself in 15 years. Because what you don't realize, those type of debilitating acts repeated over and over again. One day, you're going to be introduced to something that you're not going to like. Something that may be life-changing, life-altering in a negative way. Man. Get serious. Okay? I just want you to get serious about your life. Get serious about your decisions that you make. You know, be conscious of every decision that you make every moment of your day. Be conscious of how you feel every moment of your day. Be conscious of who you choose to surround yourself with every moment of your day. Be conscious of what you read. Be conscious of what you watch. Why? Because it's shaping you. It is shaping you. And one day you're going to be introduced to the repetitive self or the repetitive things that you're exposing yourself to now. Can I get an amen, please? I know it's a man. It's, it's, you know, it's probably one or two men right now that I'm resonating with that is listening to every word that I'm sharing with him. And the reason why I can share this is because I've been where you are. Yeah, I, Like where you are, a lot of you men, I've been there. A bit nonchalant as it relates to life. Lacking focus. Looking for the hookup. Looking for something quick and fast to repair my situation. And I'm here to tell you, if you decide to listen, it's not going to work. It doesn't exist. Something for nothing doesn't exist. There's nothing quick about building financial wealth. There's nothing fast about it. Okay? It's just not. And I don't care how you may find something that's quick and illegal. Well, you'll be in jail. You'll see. You'll be locked up. You may find something in the moment that may give you what you want, even though you don't even understand how you got it. Yeah, well, you'll be locked up. You'll see. I, my, you know, my... My expectation for men is to stand up and begin to cultivate themselves to be the type of men that your daughter will admire. Be the type of men that other men admire. Be the type of men that your woman admires. Be that type. Why? Because that's the type of men, that woman, your daughter, your wife, your girl, that's, that's what they want. Even if they don't tell you, that's what they want. They want a man that's well-groomed. They want a man that can communicate well. That he can communicate and listen to her and understand her by listening. She wants a man who is emotionally intelligent, you know, a man that doesn't always have to showcase his anger, okay, every time he feels a certain way, a man that's not argumentative or combative, 
with anyone. A man that can be calm, that can be peaceful even in chaos. Okay? A man that is very astute and proficient with his money. Like he knows how to manage the money and he knows how to create budgets and he can teach her the same thing as well on how to manage her money and how to budget her money properly. Men, what I want you to understand is like, I want you to be the type of man that when you leave this planet, you actually can be proud of the things that you've done. You're going to be proud of the legacies and the children that you have raised. Is it going to be hard? Yes. Is it going to be tough? Yes, it is. Because I know it's a man right now that's complaining, but what is tough, Wes? Yeah, it is. Yes, it's tough being a virtuous man, an extraordinary man, a wealthy man, and doing the right thing, by the way. Yeah, it's tough. It is. It's tough because, you know, I truly believe that the man, his role in a relationship is the leader. Like, it's tough being the leader. Being the leader doesn't mean control. Being the leader means being an example of what a person should be. Not just a man. Like, in a relationship with a woman, you're, you're, you, you should be an example of what a person should be. Virtuous, doing the right thing. Being nice, being respectful, being grateful, appreciative, treating people kind. You want to be that example for your woman or even for your children. That's leadership, by the way. Leadership is not control. It's not telling people what to do. It's being an example of what you want the people around you to model. Does that make sense? Come with the word amen, please. So, men, I want you, father, fathers, and even the men that are not fathers, I want you to utilize this week. I want you to take this week by the reins. I want you to self-analyze and do some self-introspection. Just really just, you know, go dark. Go in your room, turn the lights off, turn the music off. And start writing down the things that you want and the man that you want to be. Start writing down the habits and the innervating habits that you want to get rid of and eliminate. The things that you know that you're doing that you know that you need to stop doing. Start writing out saying, you know, I'm no longer going to do this. Why? Because it doesn't serve me. Yeah, it makes me feel good, but it doesn't serve me. It doesn't help you. I want you to do that today. Can I get that promise to you? You know, find yourself 15, 20 minutes, go in a room by yourself, go in the bathroom, go in your car, and believe and begin to talk to yourself. I, I, I used to do this. I think I still do it as well. And I talk to myself. I said, Wesley, you know, what is your goal this week? What do you want to do? What are some of the things that you need to work on? What are the, some of the bad habits you need to eliminate? And I just have a conversation with myself. And it's a serious conversation. It's not one of those conversations that I would have with myself and not do anything. It's a conversation that after the conversation is over, I must begin to apply it and take action on it. I want you to do the same thing as well. Okay? So, much love. If you got any value, comment the word value below, please. I'm looking at the comments. Come with the word value. If you got value here, men, fathers, I want this message to resonate with you. And even if it didn't, it's okay. Maybe next time. Maybe the next rant. Remember, I have a podcast. You can search Wesley Billion Dollar Virgin on the internet. I'm on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. And you can listen to these rants and these Sunday mindset messages to hear a man that's living 
his dreams. I'm, I'm living the exact life that I created for myself. And I'm proud of myself. And I'm happy. And I want you to be happy as well. So come to our value below. And remember, if you want to get any information about AI tools, just go to my bio, Wesley Million Dollar Virgin on Instagram. And just go to the bio, watch the video. I explain how we're using AI tools to earn six, seven figures per month using artificial intelligence. It's just a game changer. So check it out if that's something that you want. If it's not, that's okay as well. Much love. This is Wesley Billion Dollar Virgin, and let's go.